taking data from the real world and making it available for use by digital technologies is fundamental to how the modern world works. This can be done from entering values into a spreadsheet, typing text into a word processor, uploading images from a camera, or entering student results into a database. Stock exchange transactions or satellite mapping. Essentially, most aspects of digital technology involve the acquisition and use of data in some way. Now, in digital technologies, the focus is on students gaining an increasing understanding of the different sources of data available to them and how they can use and manipulate this data to solve problems. <clears throat> the process of systematically collecting data is called data logging, using a digital device to record a set of data, usually over a period of time. We see this in student assessment recording, scientific instrument recording, the phone calls you make, or the flights you book, or the information collected in a census. Digital devices can be programmed to make use of this data in many different ways, but first the data has to be stored digitally. We have, as we have seen, all data on a digital device is stored as binary codes of zeros and ones. And students need to understand that this is true for the full range of things that we can store on computers. Whether something is on or off is the simplest. But we can also store numbers, words, sounds, images and video, all in binary code. By writing their own programs to take inputs from the world via tools such as Makey Makey, the robots or websites or apps, students will come to understand how they can collect data through the use of digital devices and how they can then make use of this data. But more commonly we will have students conduct data collection exercises, creating surveys and online forms, spreadsheets and databases, all to gather data and better understand their problem, the needs of their users, or to evaluate their solutions. But we can also automate data collection using techniques such as scientific data logging instruments or the various sensors available from the Internet of Things, recording changes in the weather, for example. Now, in EFTA 2, this data collection does not need to be done using computers. So they re could record the weather each day just on a simple chart. But from 3 to 8, students should be introduced to the various ways in which digital technologies can be used to record data. And in 9 to 10, be developing specific techniques to record data in a structured way that can then be used by specialized information systems. Now, there are six key concepts related to digital data. The first is to do with synchronization. How data is stored and transmitted as an ordered sequence of symbols. And this requires knowing when a new sequence begins, similar to the pauses and punctuation we use when speaking or writing, and is achieved with digital data using special symbols or sync words that are stored or transmitted with sets of data that contain the message or information that we are storing or transmitting. Now, a digital language is used which specifies the meaning to be assigned to particular symbols and their sequences. So far, we've explored the ASCII set of symbols, but there are many others. Uh, Unicode is certainly the largest, and it has over 140,000 symbols. But each system provides a way of giving meaning to these sequences of symbols. Morse code is one you may be familiar with. But there are also symbol sets used for semaphores, for smoke signals, and a whole range of others. Now the next concept is errors. Non-digital or analog data almost always has some errors, where the information is not stored or transmitted perfectly. Now you may be familiar with uh, vinyl recordings or tape recordings, um, say of musical information or data. And every time you copied them and made a new copy, the quality of the recording degraded. Now, for digital data, unless the error is large enough that a symbol is misinterpreted as another symbol, or the sequence of symbols is changed, data can usually be stored and copied and transmitted an unlimited number of times without errors. But not always. 
And to be sure, we use a range of algorithms to validate data. Check that errors have not occurred. Now, checksums are used to keep track of blocks of data by enabling systems to notice changes in the data sequence. And these can then be corrected automatically or retransmitted. Now, this relates to the next concept of copying. Because of the inevitable presence of noise, making many successive copies of an analog recording or communication infeasible, because each new generation introduces more noise and it just keeps getting worse, the real advantage of digital technologies is that it is generally error free. Copies of copies can be made indefinitely, and digital TV and radio are examples of where we now can create the increased quality in our digital information. Granularity is the next concept. The digital representation of an analog recording, such as a photograph or a musical recording, involves the selection of a number of symbols to be assigned the value being recorded. This, num <coughs> this number of symbols determines the precision or the resolution of the resulting data. Now we see this most commonly in the amount of data used to record images. Um, the more data used, or the megapixels, the higher the resolution and the clearer the image will be of the photographs we take when they're displayed. And this leads into the next concept of compressibility or compression. Because some, set, some sets of data can be very large, such as images or video, techniques have been developed to minimize the amount of data stored without impacting significantly on the resulting resolution or granularity. The ZIP, GIF and JPEG formats are just some of such techniques. And for film, we also have MOVE, MPEG and MP4 formats. Now, each of these represent a different algorithm or codec that is used to compress the data by removing that which does not impact upon the visual or audio quality of the recording in any significant way. Generally, this is done by removing redundant data. So, for example, in a recording where there's no sound being made, in an analog recording, there would still be data being stored. By taking that out, um, for a digital recording that's compressed, we can remove those sections of silence. Or for an image, instead of recording every single pixel, we can average an area of the image um, instead of recording every single dot. Um, and this usually results in a loss of quality, but it's a trade-off between the amount of si the size needed to record the file versus the quality. And we, in particular, we see these formats used where the size of the file is very important, such as when things need to be transmitted over the internet, um, with a video on YouTube or um, images on a web page that are then displayed in your browser, for example. But your browser needs to know the type of compression algorithm or codec used so that it can decipher the data sequence, taking into account how and what has been removed.